Hey y'all, this is Jeff again with some Horseback Wisdom. Today I wanted to just do a quick video. It's been a while. So um, I wanted to do a quick video on the subject of how to live a supernatural life. And um, so I don't know if anybody's going to see this video. Sometimes YouTube doesn't even let it go out, but whatever. But I thought I should do it. Give me a quick example and use some stories. Some scriptures, Romans 8 primarily, right? So Romans 8, 37 says, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer, and I'm using the NASB, uh, New American Standard Bible. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. So what is living a supernatural life? Well, let me give you an example um, from today. So I live about an hour and a half uh, from a major city, very big city, and I hate cities, really. Um, Crowded, no trees, no grass, concrete. Ugh. So um, I had to go into this major city to conduct some business early this morning. So I got up my normal time about uh, 5.30ish, headed out to this city, took care of my business and came back. And I was, but on the way there, I went and I spoke and I said, Lord, go before me, send your angels before me. Um, all things work together for good to those who love God and according to to, love, to his purpose. I said, I claim that, Lord. And I said, make me a vessel for you today. Let me bless someone as I go and do this thing. And so I went <clears throat> through all the traffic and all the nonsense and everything, construction. So I got to this build, the government building where I had to go do some stuff. Parked my car, got out, walked out, and there were these guys in wheelchairs. So I said, hey, how are you? Good morning. And, the, and I, the building didn't open for the public for a few hours, but these guys wanted to get a jump on stuff. And um, I had access to the building for a different reason. So I, um, I just said, hey, I, you know, hope you guys are blessed and, and you're, the, you're here all full early. So I took care of my business on my way out. The, one of the gentlemen in the wheelchairs was still there. So I stopped to talk to him because I had asked the Lord to let me be a blessing to him. And I just shared with him and I just blessed him. Um, I, you know, I offered to help him. He didn't really need any help. But I, but I said, let me bless you. And I did. And, um, and that's how to live a supernatural life, right? Um, it's to walk in an expectation that every single moment of your day is in Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect according to the standards of the world. And actually, I don't care about the standards of the world. But it does mean that everything will be perfect according to the standard of God. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You see, I'm going to be 60 years old in a little while. I'm in incredible health, and I have been pretty much my whole life. I've had injuries and wounds. Um, I did a lot of, um, I guess what you would say, extreme athletic things, triathlons, marathons, that kind of stuff, um, when I was younger, <clears throat> and even in my 40s. Um, and I quit doing those, not necessarily because I couldn't, but I just kind of got bored with them. But I do have a kind of a chronic condition. I have a, <laughs> a sneezing condition. I have allergies. I have no idea. To, I mean, I found out years ago as to the, the trees in the state that I live in, and I'm not moving out of the state, so I get to either take allergy medicine or I can sneeze, right? I've prayed for my allergies to be healed a hundred times. And they're not done. They're not healed. I know for a fact they are healed in Christ Jesus because the, um, the scriptures tell us that by his stripes we are healed. But in my physical flesh, my manifestation on this earth, I still sneeze. I still have to have tissues and I can't sneak up on anybody because I sneeze. <coughs> but I can run and swim and bike and climb and jump and lift weights, and do pull-ups, and all that kind of other stuff that I do all the time. So, how does that relate to living a supernatural life? So, the way you live a supernatural life is, 
you wake up in the morning and you ask God, George Washington Carver did this, and he invented 600 things from a peanut. You wake up and ask, God, what do you want me to do today? And let me be a blessing for you today. And you expect, see, it's an expectation, right? Why is it an expectation? Because I have the word. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. I'm not going to knowingly sin. Um, if I do sin, if I have a thought that's sinful, I rebuke it. I take it under authority. Paul says taking every thought captive, right? It, it, against anything that sets, it, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Take all those thoughts captive. Oh, I don't like that person. Oh, that's captive. I wish I had. Oh, that's captive. Nope. And then when you go about your day, you ask God, hey, Lord, make me a vessel for you today. And watch what he does. Boy, I do that. And you just see amazing, crazy stuff happens all the time. Um, sometimes you get to pray for someone's healing. Sometimes you get to bless someone financially. Sometimes, and that, by the way, speaks to why you should never believe the nonsense that some people have, which is that Christianity and poverty are to go together. That's absolutely contrary to the word of God. I'm also not saying you should believe the lie that says every Christian should be a zillionaire. That's not true either. Um, Jesus said our prayer model should be give us this day our daily bread. But he also said, make for yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness so that when things fail, they, the friends that you've made, will receive you into everlasting habitations. Meaning, be smart about money. Because why? You can't give money to somebody if you don't have any, right? When, I'm, when, I'm, when I was poor financially, and I had, and I lived on $75 a week, it was hard for me to give much, right? I could give a little. If I saw somebody that didn't have anything to eat, I could give them some food, I could give them a few bucks, but I couldn't really bless anybody. If, I'm only, if I've only got $75 a week myself, and I've got to pay for a place to live, and get something to eat, and put some gas in my car so I can get to work, it's hard for me to bless other people. I wasn't in that situation for all that long, but God was with me in that situation. And there were many supernatural encounters that I could tell you about. I could sit down and talk about for forever about things, regardless of how much money I have. But it's a mindset. It's a supernatural mindset. That, so the key is waking up every single day, irregardless of your circumstances, and saying, Jesus, I bless you. Holy Spirit, I bless you. God, the Father, I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. Make me a vessel for you today, a vessel of honor for you today. Work out your plan of salvation through me. Advance your kingdom through me and the life that you've given me. And if you'll do that every single day while you're walking around on this earth, watch what happens. Not a guarantee that you won't have challenges. Not a guarantee. I'll give you an example. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I think, but uh, unfortunately, um, people have called me right before they've taken their own lives. Um, not something I want, but it's happened. God told me why. So that the last thing they could hear was his name and my exhortation for them to rely on him. But I still don't want it to have happened. Um, so living a supernatural life is not a guarantee that you're going to live this fairy tale nonsense. But it is a guarantee that you're going to live in Jesus and be blessed by him in such a way that you can't even describe. And that people in the world will think you're crazy, which is how most people think about me. Probably including my wife. <laughs> anyway, love y'all. Be blessed. Live supernaturally. Don't live naturally. It stinks. Love you. Be blessed. Read Romans 8.